Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Wild Wednesday Live presented by the Quilt Craft and Sewing Festival. I'm Raylene from Cultures Haven, and I'm your host this week. So before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about Boise. Yes, it's finally here, our first live show of the year after 14 long months. So Boise is next week. So anybody who is going to be attending the Boise show, who is a viewer here at Wild Wednesday, we want to encourage you while you're at the show to stop by my booth, Quilter's Haven, or Beth's booth, my co-host, Fabric Chicks uh, Creative Oasis. Stop by the booth walk up and say the phrase that's going to get you a prize and that is i get wild on wednesdays if you come up to the booth and say that to us we each have a special little gift just for you now speaking of boise next wednesday is setup day for the show so we aren't going to be doing our normal show but we're still be on at our regular time of two o'clock pacific beth and i are going to give you a behind the scenes look of just what it takes to set up one of the shows that we go to then on both Thursday and Friday at two o'clock Pacific, three o'clock Boise time, we will be doing live right from the show floor where we're going to highlight some of the vendors that you guys love. We're going to let you see their whole booth rather than just their few products that they show. So that's going to be a really, really exciting time. Now, unfortunately, next week we won't be able to do the door prizes only because since I'm going to be on the road with everybody, I won't be able to coordinate that. But I think with the three great days we have planned for you, you're still going to have a great, great time. Now, also, I just want to remind you guys that today's vendors are offering a special discount just for you that will go on through midnight tomorrow night, Thursday. And you can find all four of our vendors that are featured today on the Quilt Craft and Sew Mall. Remember, just click on the Wild Wednesday logo and that will take you right to the page that gets you quickly to all four vendors and will also tell you what their special is, their coupon code if it's required, etc. Now, if you have any questions during the show, we ask that you please, please hold those until the end. We will have all of our vendors back at the end for a quick question and answer period. And if you type in your questions too soon while I'm monitoring the show, I may not see them and I don't want to miss anyone's questions. And if you ever miss an episode of Wild Wednesday Live, be sure you check us out on the YouTube channel. You can see all of our past episodes there, and that's at the Quilt Craft Sew Mall. And while you're there, be sure and hit the subscribe button, because that way you will never, ever miss an episode. Now, like we do every week, we have five terrific door prizes today. Starting with, we have a beautiful adjustable pin cushion coming from Thimbles for You. We have a mini iron from Aliso Irons. We have a three month membership into her VIP club from uh, Claire at Creative Feet. We have an ice cream cozy bundle from Winter Designs. And Quilters Haven will be giving two digital patriotic panels. So later in the show, we're going to give you the secret phrase that you're going to enter. And for those of you that are new with us, what I'm going to do between the second and third vendors today is I'm going to be giving you a special keyword. You will simply type that in the comments and that enters you into the contest. Then after the show, I will uh, pull the winners and post later right on the same Facebook page who the winners are. Now I'm going to warn you guys right after the show today, I have to run to a quick doctor's appointment. So I won't have it up as soon as normal, but it should be up by six o'clock Pacific time. All right, so let me see if I've got all that housekeeping out of the way before we start. Oh, one more quick thing. I always like to remind everybody, especially for our new viewers, um, we are streaming live over the internet. So therefore, on occasion, we might have a connection issue. Anybody that's watched the news since the pandemic knows that everything is happening remote through Zoom, StreamYard, all the different platforms. And we're all at the mercy of our internet connection. And some of our vendors are a little more remote or sometimes a storm might blow through that's gonna affect the connection. So sometimes the sound is wonky, sometimes the picture. Now, if it's ever so bad that we don't feel you're getting any value out of it, we will stop the vendor, we'll have them try to reconnect and if that doesn't fix it we'll reschedule them because we want everybody to have a great experience okay so i think that's just about it for all that housekeeping stuff so our first person up today we've had her on before we've had a great great response to her so we've asked her to join us again and that's jan from thimbles for you so are you there jan i'm here hi 
Hi, how, how have you been? I'm good. I'm good. We're glad to have you back on. It's and a beautiful I understand- spring day in Iowa. All the flowers are blooming out here. Woo. Awesome. Well, we're anxious to have you back on. I understand you're going to show us a little bit of thimble use and things today. So yes, I'm going to let you take it off and go for it. And let's see what you got. All righty. Thank you so much. So thimbles are not, my thimbles are not like your grandmother's thimbles. Um, A lot of people have some of those old bucket style thimbles, but the thimbles that I make are very different. I make uh, three different uh, shapes of thimble. Boy, it's hard to find the camera. Three different shapes of thimbles and the shape is from the bottom. So there's the traditional pretty much round thimble with an open nail. This one is fairly square. Can you see the square edges on that as we look? And then there's an oval. See how it's kind of flat. So look at your own finger and see if you think your finger is more oval, more wide, wide at the um, sides and flat from top to bottom, or more square or more round. So any of those thimbles will fit on my finger. It's just which one I prefer. The other thing about fitting a thimble that's really important is to make sure that your fingernail line matches with the line on the nail guard. Now there's a nail guard on all my thimbles because as you're stitching with a thimble, you're pushing the needle here. And the last thing you want is to get that needle up underneath your fingernail. So we have what we call a nail guard. So as you sew, you may be pushing with the side or you may be rocking with the end, but that nail guard is there to help you so that you can push right up there where you want to and get a good strong push, but you won't get it up under your fingernail. So that's the nail guard. Parts of thimbles, there's the round opening, the square opening, and the oval opening, and then there's the nail guard. And a lot of my thimbles, uh, a majority of what I sell are these open nail thimbles because you can have as long of a fingernail as you want and they still look nice and they still feel nice. It gives you a little bit of air conditioning vent on the back. So as you're working, 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 trying to get a binding on before the show or trying to finish something before graduation or a wedding, you won't have to get all sweaty in there. My thimbles are made using the lost wax casting process and the lost wax process starts with a piece of wax and it can be carved or melted or um, there's different um, densities of wax and so they can be formed in your fingers and then pushed on and stuck together. So there's a lot of different ways. These more intricate thimbles that I'm showing you today have been um, Cast the wax part has been made using the computer assisted design. So it's a CAD product. And so that means that I have learned how to get on the computer and uh, kind of like you do with your long arm machines, get on the computer and design the whole thing uh, from scratch uh, as a little 3D piece. And then I have a 3D printer upstairs and I print out that first piece on what they call casting wax, which looks and acts a lot like hot glue gun. It's about that shape and about that feel. And then we take that wax piece and go through the whole casting process. So the wax is covered with a a porcelain type investment, which means it is covered um, all over, inside and out, all around with investment. And then as you put it into the kiln to heat, the wax burns out. And then in the morning after that's spent the whole night getting hotter and hotter and burning out, and it's finally about 1300 degrees, we melt the the, uh, silver grain down to at 1600 degrees and pour it into the void that was left by the wax that melted out. And so then we let it sit for a few minutes and cool off. And then we plunge it into a bucket of cold water and the investment like porcelain wood, if it was going from hot to cold, will just shatter and fall off and kind of, Uh, consume itself and fall off into the water. Then we have a a metal thimble just like the wax thimble that we started with. And so that's how all these pieces are made. All my chatelaine pieces and all my thimble pieces are made using that same lost wax casting method. Um, My casting studio is um, in the pole barn about 100 yards from here outside and down the hill a little bit. So I always tell everybody I live in the cornfields and I actually do (laughs) right out here in the cornfields. We had a bobcat on the front step yesterday morning. So 
Um, I don't only make uh, open nail thimbles. I also make all different kinds. So I hope you can see this okay. Here's my three different shapes of openings. You can see them a little better when they're all just laying still here. I make the traditional uh, bucket style thimbles as well. You can see there's a kind of a short and a medium and a tall. So there's all different shapes. Um, this short one is, it's called Good Luck and it's the shortest one I make. It's a size five and a half. I could make other sizes, but I haven't so far. Really nice little short thimble for somebody who might have a, a bruised knuckle or a, or a swollen knuckle. This is a brand new one. Her, it's a um, carnation flower on a lattice background like you'd have on the skirt of your house. Um, so beautiful thimble. The dimples are actually the, the bumps and creases in the lattice. And so the um, needle sticks really nicely to that. <clears throat> Got a little hoop where I can show you. So see how we can get it to stick really nice right in those things and it'll, it won't move at all. It just stays right there. So you could use this for rocking or for um, any kind of um, handwork that you would use a thimble for. This one does have a little bit of, an, of bumps along the edge, so you can kind of catch your needle in those bumps if you want to, but for the most part, it just has really nice deep grooves and, and dimples so that you can hang on really well. Another favorite one, and this is a style that was made in India in the 1800s, and it has this uh, zigzag bottom, so if you do have a kind of a lumpy finger, um, this one is tapered just enough from bottom to top that you can get your whole finger in there and you'll just go as far as you go. On a swelled up day, you may not quite reach the end. And on a skinny day when it's winter time and you're cold, you'll get all the way to the end. And so that's one of the blessings of this. The, the bumps make it so that you can get it in between your knuckle there. And it also has that taper to it. So you've got lots of options. Um, and even with the open nail ones, there's a lot of differences. This is a very, very short uh, thimble. That one is a hen and her chicks in the front. And a lot of ladies who have a, a swollen knuckle, we can grab a hold of this bottom part and pull it out just a little bit. Everybody kind of freaks out a little bit when I talk about bending their thimble, but I really do just use a pair of uh, these um, pliers or even a needle nose plier if I want to do a little closer change. And then I also have a special plier. It's a, it's a loop opener. So these pliers, when I squeeze them, they go open instead of going shut. So I can put it in the inside of the thimble and make the bottom opening instead of being the round opening that we have right now. If I squeeze just a little bit, we can make it oval. And so it changes the shape of the opening. And I always bring all my tools along to the shows. So if you see me at a show this year, I will have both of those tools and about a dozen other tools with me. And I can help you get fitted, especially those of you that have kind of lumpy, bumpy hands. You might want to um, get a special custom fit. This one is a very round bottom. And it's pretty short, so it's, it's going to sit above your knuckle. So this one I can wear in about a size four and a half, whereas when I get into these taller ones, I need to go to a five and a half and sometimes even a six. This is a brand new little bunny guy. He's so adorable. I got him done for Easter, and you can see there's lots of bunnies all the way around the back, too. They're just all goofing around and doing their bunny stuff. And it's just a really cute one. It has a nice um, amount of closure in the front so that you feel like you're protected really well. One of the things I often have to do on this is to pull this out just a little bit so it's not banging on your nail right there. That longer ear tends to bang just a little bit. So I'll help you get custom fitted when you get to a show. Another brand new piece that's a little more open than some is this peacock. Can you see her little face there? And then her long, his, I guess it's the peacock, not the P-N, <laughs> that has the long tail. That It's often the boys that are very decorative. And then there's the P-Hen over here on the side, which is her little short tail. She's kind of a cutie. And actually, I snuck it into the background here, but there's a little tiny egg there that just hatched. So there's another. So there's the whole family. There's a whole family of peas. So um, this one has a very straight uh, front and you can see how nicely it matches my nail shape. I can get this on so there's hardly any space between my nail and the thimble. And that means that it's not gonna 
hurt me or touch me at all. And these nice deep grooves on the side, the beautiful floral design, and then the really nice um, design. I put little hearts in his little tail that goes around. Um, really a beautiful vintage piece. And I have a matching chatelaine that goes with this one too. So. So we've talked about closed thimbles, we've talked about open thimbles, and then the third type is the tailor's thimbles. And there are not a lot of people making tailor's thimbles these days, and I've had several couture designers contact me and try and get a hold of these. Um, these are all solid sterling silver. The price has not changed on these. The price has gone up on the, the others because the price of silver has gone up so much. But the price of these hasn't changed at all. In fact, I've come up with several new styles um, even just in the last few months. So this is one that I have in whole sizes in the spring, um, which is a butterfly. And then in quarter sizes with uh, summer, which is the uh, succulents. And then in uh, half sizes, with the winter, which is uh, evergreen and pine cones. And then in um, three quarter sizes with the, uh, the last one, which is oak leaves and branches. And so um, I've got all different sizes and shapes of these. I've even got one that's a cherry blossom that has a little flower on it and a little gemstone right in the middle of the flower. And you just wear that on the back. These are very handy, but they're only good if you're pushing from the side. So again, we get out our, our needle and thread and you're gonna be able to push there really well but if you're one of these who wants to push with the end, oh, you're going to poke yourself. So don't do that. So they're good for pushing from the side. You'll have to uh, make an adjustment if you want to be able to wear these topless um, tailor's thimbles. Make an adjustment so that you can make that work. And the last kind, I have a daughter who is living in Japan. She's coming home after six years in the very north end of Japan. And this is a Yubi Nuki, a uh, Japanese uh, thimble. Um, they make them out of cardstock paper that they wrap around their finger and, and attach to the right size. And then they wrap around and around and around with silk thread. And then they go in and out, in and out, all the way around with silk thread. And so it's mostly the silk thread that makes them tough, but you know they're not going to last forever if they're made of thread. So I am now making them out of sterling silver. You can see this one has a little thistle design. My father is Irish, and so thistles are a big deal at weddings and and all kinds of occasions at my house. And so this is the Yubi Nuki um, that is made out of solid sterling. Again, you wear it on the side of your finger and when you're ready to stitch, a lot of people use this one for um, doing their hems and edges because it's just one stitch at a time. And so you jump in there and take your stitch and see how that's just, you push here or you push here as you're taking that one stitch. And so, Really handy for that. Not great again. If you want to do your quilting, rocking, it's you're going to hurt yourself pretty bad. So lots of different sizes and styles and all those um, different uh, types. And the other thing that I love to make out of sterling silver is these chatelaines. So I've today I've got on one of my um, necklaces. Um, this is how we store our thimbles. It's just a bobble, uh, which is two or three um, beads, and then it has a little clasp at the top. You can clasp this around a scissors handle, or you can uh, put it right on a chain. I like doing them on a chain because then I can put it around my neck and it's really easy to contain. So there it is around my neck, and I'll get all the way back. This is a 30 inch chain, so it's kind of a long one. Get back to the clasp of the chain and I'll drop my um, open nail thimble through there and so then that my thimble sits on top of those beads and I can put this on my neck. So I often realize after I'm in the grocery store that I have my thimble on in the grocery store and I'd rather not have my thimble on in the grocery store. So I will have this chain around my neck and then I'll be able to just put, take it back off and wear it on my neck. It just looks like somebody's necklace. It doesn't look like it's a tool holder, but it really is. So next time I'm sitting back down, I've still got it around my neck. I can just take the chain off, dump it off the chain, and there you go. You're ready to, ready to sew again.
So, and this, the little bobble with just a couple beads looks nice on your neck, even if there's no thimble on it. So don't feel embarrassed if you find yourself in the grocery store with this on here and this on here, just fix yourself, put it back. So that's one of my tool holders. I make a lot of the uh, traditional, um, more vintage uh, chatelaine pieces as well. And so I'm gonna kind of show you through these. I often get asked about these. So this one is, uh, this is called Cheyenne. The chatelaine itself is called Cheyenne. This is a needle keeper. I have these in all different sizes. Um, they're mostly the same diameter of a tube. They'll hold a dozen or so needles real easy. And the lid for the needle keeper is attached to the chain so you won't lose the lid. Um, put it back on. You can store needles in there. This is a thread cutter. The back of it is an Ulfa blade with covered with a silver disc. And uh, so any space where that disc, the blade shows through, you can cut threads with that. You can get through an airport with these real easy because nobody knows it's a scissors or a cutting device. They can't tell. It looks decorative. And then here's a thimble. And the thimble is again on a bobble. Um, the bobbles, when you're wearing a thimble on a chatelaine with a bobble like this, you do have to disconnect it, the bobble from the chatelaine, dump the thimble off, and then I always hang my bobble right back up so I don't lay it down somewhere and lose it. So there's the bobble there, and here's the thimble here on my finger. So I'm all set for doing some quilting. I've got a nice, this, this one has a lamb, um, a sheep and a lamb on it. And it has kind of a wooly top. For those of you that do the, the wool stitching, this is a really handy one for that. So that one goes there. I've also got a new bobbin. It's uh, sterling silver, a sodded little, little tiny spool. And I wind those with thread, so it gives a little color. I've got a little... Um, Hair, one of those clear hair rubber bands around here to hold the end because you can see it's going to unwind itself if you're not careful. Um, somebody also recommended that I put a little rubber disc around the inside of the spool, and that works really good too. Then you can wrap it around like the Guterman thread. So either way works nice. This Tussie Mussy is a Victorian era pin cushion. It looks like a little pine cone with a, it has actually a wool ball on top and then it's covered with hand dyed silk velvet. So it's got a really nice um, inside. It works really great for a pin cushion. A lot of people use these just for a needle or two with a different color thread if you're using more than one color. This is a combination tool. It has wax in the top area. And then there's a needle threader wire in here. And again, my lids are always connected to my bottoms. And so there's a chain that connects it so you will not lose your parts. And then when you're done, put your chain, your lid right back on your wire and hang it back up. So it stays right there, really handy. Put you in there. There you go. Um, and then there's one more chicken thimble on this one. There's some different pieces here. This one's actually a thimble in a cage. My cages are made so that they're attached to a chatelaine or you can attach them just to a necklace as well, a chain. But then the, the cage itself uh, hinges at the bottom and clasps at the top. This is that really short um, bucket thimble. The bucket thimbles won't go on bobbles because there's no place for the chain to come out. So these have to be put on a in a cage if they're going to be hung on a chatelaine. So hinges at the bottom, you pull the hinge shut and you put the a lobster clasp through both of the top loops and you're all set. So lots of other pieces. The scissors is actually my favorite piece. The scissors can come out of their scissor sheath and be used while they're still attached. So you don't accidentally, so you don't spend a lot of time un unhooking and rehooking, but also um, you don't have to worry about laying them down somewhere. They're gonna be hanging there no matter what, unless you un unhook something. And they're right in your uh, work zone when they're on that 30 inch chain. So this is a really handy piece. You can see there's a lot of different styles in the scissors. Some of them are really tiny little delicate scissors and then they have a tiny little delicate um, sheath on them as well. That's absolutely gorgeous, Jan. Your stuff is so beautiful. And if you guys have never seen this in person, then you're missing out because as gorgeous as they look on camera, 
it, the camera does them no justice. They're just beautiful. We're so glad that you were able to come back on today and share that with us. And if Thank I understand you. right, your special today is you're going to be doing free shipping. So Free shipping uh, on any right. orders that are placed today and tomorrow. Awesome. That's so great. Well, I hope you can stick around to the end of the show because we do have a couple of questions that already came in. Will do. Thanks, Raylene. All right. Uh -huh. All right, guys. Um, next up, unfortunately, we had a last minute situation and Michelle with Aliso is unable to be with us today. She had something that she just she couldn't work it out, but she was so good to say that we could still give her door prize. So we'll still be giving away that mini iron. And she would also honor the special that she would have done um, today through tomorrow night at midnight. And her code is I have it in front of me here. Um, her code is WKLY10, and that will give you 10% off either the yellow or the pink irons. So again, um, we'll make sure that we have that uh, posted on her page if it's not already. And uh, real quick though, before we go on to our next person, I just, uh, I wanna do our quick, you know, I always like to do a roll call. So if you have not already typed in where you are watching from, please do that just so we know where everybody's at. All right, next up, we are so excited to have um, back Claire from Creative Feet. I know a lot of you guys have seen Claire at the show. She always does these amazing demonstrations, and she's back with us today to show us some more of her wonderful, wonderful items. So, hi, Claire. How are you? Claire, can you hear us? Hi, Claire. Can you hear us? Hang on there, a little technical difficulty. We got you, Claire. Can you hear us now? Okay. I know she's working on it here. Hi, Raylene. I'm great. There she is. I'm, and I'm awesome. and I must agree with you that if you haven't seen Jan's uh, thimbles in person, they are stunning. They absolutely are. are well, we're. Me? Yes, we can hear you now. So we're anxious for to see what you've got. So I'm just going to turn it over to you. I can hear you, Raylene, and I responded. Yep, we can so hear you. you're not hearing me? Yes, we do hear you. <laughs> yes, we hear you. <laughs> you're good. No, we've lost you, Claire. If you can hear me, Claire, we had you just fine, and now we don't. <laughs> I don't think Claire can hear us for me to tell her that we do not hear her right now. Um, we are going to try to get a hold of her. <laughs> Hang on, I see her fidgeting maybe. Maybe she sees I that we don't. I did not mute it, I swear. Hey, there you go. We got this you back This is why now. I stopped using StreamYard for uh, my I'm so, We've got you now, so go ahead. And, go ahead and uh, take it you away. You may not be hearing me yet, but I am. And hello, everybody. If you've seen me at a show before and you've hung out in my booth, you know that you, you may have even hung. I do hear you. I can hear you, Raleene. I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you okay, fine, so Claire. Okay, so I have my own YouTube show every Thursday at 2 Mountain Standard Time. So tomorrow I will be live, and we're going to do some inking. And this is an example of the inking. And I'm going to switch to my overhead camera in case my mic is out of sync so that you guys can see and not be annoyed by my voice. There we go. So you see how pretty this is? This is actually fabric ink. Some of the things that we carry at creativefeet.com. So tomorrow, I'm not going to be able to go this far into inking, but I will be teaching this tomorrow at 2. And if you're not familiar with who I am, I'm the inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine feet. The Satin Edge Foot is our most popular product. It is trending right now on Facebook. And you can see the video on the demonstration of the foot on our Creative Feet 
fan page. So if you just search inside of Facebook for Creative Feet, you'll be taken to our page where you can watch videos that we have. But I'm I'm going to be doing some sewing, I promise. The Creative Feet come packaged with adapters that make them accommodate all different makes and models of sewing machines. So you're just able to snap the foot right on to an adapter that we include within the package. And here's a close up of it. And eventually this thing will come on. It's a little slow to start. There we go. This was last week's class or live episode at my YouTube channel. So if you're not already a YouTube fan of ours, if you go to creativefeet.com, you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see the YouTube link. And this is an applique that I did using the satin edge foot. And then this, this is a trim that I sewed on using the sequins and ribbon foot. And the sequins and ribbon foot has tubes that help you to guide your trims in place so that you can sew any type of trim that you may want to sew without having to hold on to the trim at all. A couple weeks back, I taught this clutch purse on our YouTube live show. And when I go live, I go live as long as it takes to finish what I'm doing. So um, be sure to check out this video and many more. The pearls and piping foot made it so that I could sew this zipper in with this beautiful addition of this beaded trim. So the pearls and piping foot doesn't only help you sew beads on, it actually helps you sew zippers as well. And these are sample of some more of the things that you can do with the pearls and piping foot. And I promise I'm going to still try to do some sewing, but you can see that the pearls and piping foot has a tunnel and it is a patented tunnel shape. So no sewing machine company has this exact foot. They have may have a lookalike, but not the same foot. It allows you to sew one, two, three, up to four rows of trims and maybe even more depending on how big they are at one time. And this foot also gathers your fabric all the way up automatically without you having to worry about breaking your thread. Sorry that my name is showing up as close. <laughs> That's the name of the, the camera that I had on, and uh, it's been a while since I've joined them live. These are items that you'll find at Creative Feed as well. And uh, this is my handmade. I actually am the one who turns these for you and creates these wooden irons that eliminate the need to use an iron. Not all the time, because we definitely want to get one of those Alisos. We also carry other products that you may be missing if you're a regular at the shows. One of them is the bamboo batting. Winline wanted me to say hello to everybody and to let you know that Creative Feet is a source for all of their batting. And they have this wonderful 100% bamboo batting that has stretch to it. It has a scrim inside that allows it to stretch along with the fabric. So you don't have to worry about your batting actually tearing inside of your quilt. And it is my go-to batting, my favorite. And if you've ever seen the Appliquick product line, we are also a full line dealer of the Appliquick products, including her her scissors that help you if you have physical challenges to not feel pain. And then we also are a proud dealer of the cutter pillar light tablets that give you three levels of lightness. And I love getting things set up beneath my pad put proper usually I put my pattern beneath it but you can also put your pieces under there keep them from getting a mess or lost before you go to sewing them and this is actually something that you can cut directly on if you haven't seen it before and you may be concerned go oh come on you're going to cut right on top of your lighted surface but this is a tablet that is designed to withstand the pressure that you push down with to cut and you can cut right 
over your lit surface, which makes English or foundation paper piecing an absolute dream. This is one of my tutorials as well. A free pattern is included on my YouTube channel for this pattern. And we've just released the add a quarter, which are pretty much, I, I consider these add a seam allowance rulers because each ruler actually helps you to add your quarter inch seam allowance when doing foundation paper piecing. I did just do a video and it is on our website to help you understand the differences between these. We're also a proud carrier of the Wonderfill thread and we have the pre-wound bobbins as well, which are absolutely wonderful. We put them through rigorous testing as that is what I'm known for, taking a scientific approach at the sewing industry. And this bobbin thread I used for every type of thread that I had and from invisible thread, which is only four thousandths of an inch in diameter, all the way up to pearled cotton. And if you didn't know you could sew with pearl cotton in the needle, well, I did it recently and it didn't just do a, a somewhat of a good job. It is what you see in the center of, of this actual Dresden plate. And we also have the dies from Crafter's Edge for cutting out fabrics like this. If you don't have the uh, finger dexterity that you'd like, but this is actual pearl cotton going around this circle and it is quite something i hope you can see it as well as i would like you to be able to see it and then we also are the makers of stabilizers and this one is the one that everyone was using to make masks over the last year and a half this is our stick and tear which is for machine embroidery that lets you do things like embroider on baseball caps even with a regular sewing machine, if you didn't know you can embroider with a regular sewing machine on baseball caps, well then you're not familiar yet with our Octi Hoops. And our Octi Hoops are free motion quilting frames that I created to make it so that you can embroider and quilt without physical damage to your neck and your hands. So you don't have to push down anymore when you quilt. And sometimes we use one frame at a time. Sometimes we use two frames at a time. And there will be some lessons coming up inside of my school. Create with Claire Rowley, which is what you win today. You win three months of a free membership to the VIP group. Now, my school is free for everybody to join. So even if you don't win today, please sure to join it. And it's create.clairowley.com. <laughs> that dot com i'm sorry so you can see this little handle drops into the frame and it makes it so that you can draw with your sewing machine you put your hand on the frame that's beside and beneath when we quilt and rest your 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 elbows on the table and we grab with our non-dominant hand to hold the frames together and then you just draw so that's what's going to happen here you're not going to be able to see this frame but it goes beneath the quilt and this is not basted with anything at all. This is just the bamboo batting doing what it does best, which is holding your fabrics together without needing to safety pin or do any basting stitches. However, if you're uncomfortable not basting, we also have our fabulous and very popular liquid-based water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle that lets you baste things together without using straight pins. In essence, this eliminates the need for pins. The thread that I'm using in my needle right now is the Invisifil by Wonderfill, and it comes in little starter packs as well as mini kings and just your regular, you can buy these individually as well. I think you'll love seeing how easy it is to buy thread at creativefeet.com. I sure do miss seeing you guys at the shows and I will be here at the end for the questions and answers segment. I'm gonna move my microphone so I can see a little bit better. And I don't have my glasses on right now, so we'll see how good I do. Here we go, elbows down, shoulders relaxed, and you bring your presser foot down, even though you won't see a foot there at all, because that's one of the things that's so great about the Octi Hoops. And that is O-C-T-I dash hoops. So elbows down, shoulders relaxed, and this is something I'm actually gonna be using on my 
table for this summer. And these pieces were cut out, as I mentioned before, with the Crafter's Edge Crossover 2 machine. If you haven't seen that in action, I did just recently film a lesson on it. So when you reach an, or you fill in the area that you're going to quilt, you just slide the bottom frame and then you bring the other frame down to it. And that's how you progress across your quilt. So no foot means no puckers. No foot means you can see with full vision what is in front of you. That is if you're wearing your glasses. <laughs> So if you haven't seen the creative feet before, I was going to thread my machine if I have still have a little time and show you the satin edge in action. But as I mentioned, inside of our creative feet group at Facebook, you will see the video. It's a minute long. It only takes a minute to see why this foot is so great. But you can see how fluid this moves. I'm not pushing down at all. And now I'm going to just show you how I can quilt with only one hand. I'm going to take that hand out of play and now just quilt one handed. And what's really nice about this is there's no way to pucker your fabric if there's no foot used. And in case you're wondering if you have to lower your feed dogs, my feed dogs are in fact up. I have not lowered them. I'm using the Schmetz Super Universal 9014 needle which we also offer the entire Schmetz line of needles at creativefeet.com. So this is one-handed sewing. And by the way, I am right-handed. I cannot write with my left hand, but I can quilt with my left hand for some reason. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me <laughs> if something works as long as it works well. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to go, but I feel like, I feel like I'm running out of time. So tomorrow at two, I'm live for who knows how many hours. The longest I was on live was six hours and that was me determined to finish my project. I don't know what time I'm supposed to end, maybe. Yeah, I think you're good. Here. If you can hear me, Claire, I think you were you probably me, good. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and change my thread so that you can see the stitch better. And if I get to stay on, then I will show you the satin edge in action. Claire, Claire, can you hear me at all? And by the way, there's never a pucker on the back of this quilt. I'll go ahead and show you a close-up of the back. Claire, can you hear me? Sounds like. Hello. Can you hear me, Claire? Are you for a little longer? No. <laughs> Actually, longer? we're trying right. to get a hold of you. No, no. Hey, Claire, can you hear me? So this is the backside of this quilt. You can see there's. Yeah. I can. Okay. Can you hear me yes, now, Claire? Yes, I can, Relaine. Okay, yeah, we actually do need to move on, but you have given us a ton of terrific information and okay. some great, great products. Yes, I can, I'm Raylene. I don't know why you can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> yes, I can, Raylene. Okay. okay, we're just, we're actually, unfortunately, I guess we're yes. not hearing each other. Yeah, I, we're not hearing each other so well, but um, we're going to move now on to our next vendor because we're kind of running over. So, so I'm that, sorry, Claire. Um, I can't hear, but I think I'm ending. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, guys, I'm sorry about that. You know, again, we're going over the internet. Sometimes there's problems, but I know you guys got a lot of terrific information from Claire on that. And uh, hopefully we can we can communicate with her to have her back for the Q&A at the end. So real quick, before we go to our last vendor today, I know you guys are waiting for the contest for our drawing. So again, if you're new with this, I'm going to give you the phrase that pays, kind of like the old radio show days. In just a second, all you're going to do is type that word in one time. I ask please that you only type it in once and please only type it in if you actually want to win a prize because it gets kind of hard sometimes to track everybody down. Now, again, I will be posting the names of the winners later on today, hopefully by about six o'clock Pacific time. So just check back right here on the Quilt Craft and Sew Facebook page and uh, you'll see the winners and it will tell you what to do in order to redeem your prize. So the special word of the day in honor of next week is Boise. 
So the secret word again is Boise. All right, we're going to go now to our last vendor, who is certainly also a fan favorite. Um, I know everybody loves Linda from Winter Designs. Hi, Linda. Are you there? Hey, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, we're glad to have you back. And, you know, like I said, uh, we had the one vendor that wasn't able to come on at the last minute today, but I, uh, all of our vendors have been so great about adding a few minutes to their presentation. So we'd still yeah. have our full show today. So, uh, and now all of a sudden we're running a little behind. So I'm going to let uh, <laughs> Linda take it over because I know she's got a bunch of new stuff to show you and I'm anxious to see it as well. So I'm going to try to talk fast, and you guys know I do that pretty well, so hopefully you can understand. So this is Stitching in the Kitchen with Linda, and if you all have been to the shows before where I've done those presentations, you know I've done kitchen stuff for years. So I've got a ton of videos out there that I really recommend you watch. So I want to show you some new stuff. Everybody knows most likely about the microwave bowl cozies, and most likely you know about my templates. My templates that have the no-slit material, you can see how this grabs. So when I go to turn, cut and cut and cut, the fabric stays with it. Well, my microwave bowl cozies have holes and the holes allow me to get darts. That way, this seam here will be exactly the same, exactly the same, exactly the same. And I have both rounded curves. You can see how this is rounded. And then I have square. I only offered the 10 and a half inch before. That's the most popular size. But I had so many people asking for the 12 and a half inch. This is for plates, dinner plates. And it's for those bigger bowls too. So if you're a pasta fan and you like to eat out of the big pasta bowls, then that makes it really nice too. But I started getting requests and thank you guys so much for your requests because it lets me know what I should be offering. So I got requests to do ice cream cozies and I really didn't know what to do. And then I had a couple of people that posted pictures. So thank goodness I saw pictures and I said, I can do that. So when you eat ice cream, this is a pint of ice cream and some of you go right to the pint. Some of you stick it in a bowl. But the idea when you've got this around, this is my coffee cozy. You can see this doesn't really fit. This doesn't close. My coffee cozy goes around your regular coffee cups. So I thought about making this bigger, but then you've got the material down at the bottom and then that's going to be cold and the paper gets a little mushy. Ask me how I know when I was doing all the testing, I bought a bunch of these. I took the ice cream out, but these things started falling apart pretty quickly. So I decided to come up with something different. So this is the template and you can see it has the holes just like my microwave bowl cozies. And by the way, I have six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half, 10 for layer cakes, 10 and a half, 12 and a half, 15 inch. So you can do small bowls, you can do big bowls, you can do casseroles, those kinds of things. And again, plates too. But this one is made for the ice cream cozy. So we filmed a video on it last week and Zeke just finished it. I was gonna upload it tonight, but it'll probably go up tomorrow night instead. But this template with the no slip material and those holes, this allows me to cut so that I get all of these pieces that now form together. So you can see how this inside of here and inside of here, I know you guys can't see, but right inside of here, there are cut marks. So our rotary cutter, instead of it hitting along the edge there, you can actually go inside that so you can cut those corners nicely. And what that allows you to do is stitch up your sides you stitch up your sides, you stitch up your sides, you stitch up your sides, and then I've got one here and I've got one here. And when I stitch these together, these cozies turn into cozies. So this is an ice cream cozy and it will hold that pint of ice cream. But, you know, I have people that tell me, hey, I don't eat just ice cream. I want to have hot stuff too. Well, hot stuff like these guys, so the ramen noodles, this stuff here. And then there's an ice cream that's a gelato. And this one is fatter. It's thicker than this. But guess what? It holds this as well. And not only does it hold all of those other things, but it also is a great thing for backyard barbecue or backyard get together. Put candles in these little cans that you can get at the dollar stores. And then you can put these out and have a candle in there, not worry about anything burning, but it gives you a nice little kind of celebration. And if you're doing whatever theme, 4th of July, you know, to some dressing um, for Memorial Day and for holidays, so you can coordinate your fabrics with that too. So the template, as I said, has the holes. This is the perfect size to do these guys. And I want to make a bigger one because when I started looking for this stuff, they actually have bigger cups of 
these kinds of things too, like the cup of noodles. So if you're interested in getting something like that, let me know, because really all I need to do is just make this larger. And again, this stuff, because of that no slip material, it grabs. So again, we just filmed a video on that. And I mentioned in the door price, I'm giving this away as the door price and a few other things. I've got them down on the floor, but I'm not gonna grab. So the idea is ice cream cozies, stitch them for the kitchen. So I'm gonna give you a few other things. By the way, this template is my prototype. I had to have Philip drill the holes for me because when they made this for me, they didn't drill the holes. So this is not even available yet. I'm hoping that I'll have it next week. But whoever wins the door prize is going to get one of these and a few other goodies too when this gets in. On my website and on my Facebook, I should say on Facebook, I'm doing a giveaway that I'll be posting tomorrow. And this and a bunch of other things will be part of that too. So microwave bowl cozies, coffee cozies, and now ice cream cozies and all the ramen noodle kind of cozies too. Okay, so I said something about dinner, movie night, that kind of thing. And this is such a cool thing that I've been wanting to make forever. What do I have inside of here? popcorn. And Tina just ran downstairs and popped the popcorn in here. This guy here, you can use whatever you want. What did I do? I used my 12 and a half by 12 and a half. And I cut it off just so it was a little bit shorter because 12 and a half with a fold is 25. So I actually have this. When we stitch these together, you can see the lining here. I did a different color for you. Stitch these together. I'm gonna do a video on this, but I think this is so cool. Why is this a cool thing? Because you get popcorn that doesn't have stuff in it. None of the oil, none of the butter, none of the junk. When you look at these things that you get, I have some on the shelf that they're just greasy and disgusting looking, and I'm eating all of that stuff. And your fingers are all disgusting too. You can pour this out into a bowl, and then you can add your salt or your butter or whatever it is. But this is a cool popcorn bag. Isn't that cool? So I'll be showing you how to do that too. Now, I had lots of people asking about my adult bib. So I'm going to pull all this stuff over here. We did a video on the adult bib too, and that is posted already on my YouTube. So the adult bib, what is an adult bib and why do we have an adult bib? Well, you know, it's for the husband that's messy. It's for you in a nice new outfit and you do not want all of the barbecue stuff on your clothing. But adult bibs are kind of, you know, uh, do I really want to wear a bib? So at least make your fabric something that's pretty, something that coordinates. In the video I showed how to take, here's a man's button down shirt and I stitched right down through the buttons on the front. You can do the same back, that's the back of the shirt, but I love the idea of camo material and then these are blue jeans. This side seam right here is the leg of my side of my blue jeans. So this is a really fun one to do too. And then if you've got girls, and by girls, I mean girls of any age, because I show you in the video how to make this bigger and smaller. You know, I have a small baby bib for babies, and I show you how with that baby bib template to make it for preemies, but I also show you how to make it a little bit bigger too with the pocket. But what's really nice about this is this can be made for whatever. You're on a cruise, you're at the backyard barbecue, you're going to a seafood festival, Wherever you're going, you're sitting on the couch, you're in your um, office, at your desk, you're in the car, at least make the fabric fun. Let me pull over a couple of the fabrics that I picked out. So sports teams, of course, those are always great. Fishing, if you've got your father, your grandfather in a nursing home and he does not want to put this on, then grab something that takes him back that's reminiscent of something he liked to do. I have a lady that called me and said that her son who is 14 that has Down syndrome, really needs to wear these bibs and he does not want to wear them. So I went to Joanne's and I looked at fabrics, took a bunch of pictures and he and she chose this. This guy here is the Marvel Comics. He loves uh, Spider-Man. So I'm gonna do that side on the front and this side on the back too, they're reversible. The other thing too, when we wear adult bibs is we wanna make these bibs so that if somebody really needs to leave it on, and not be able to take it off Velcro, you know, you can pull it off. Snaps are a little bit harder for somebody to pull off. So you have snap tools out there that you can get. Martelli sells these, but you can also do these elastics. This elastic right here, this elastic, I showed in the video one that you can sew on with a button. There's a button here, but I wanna do another one and I will, and I'll take pictures of it for you. I wanna stick this inside here and then I wanna stick another piece inside here, and then I'm gonna sew it inside over here. 
So this pulls on your head and pulls off. If you've got somebody like the lady that has the son that has Down syndrome, he's probably not going to know anything other than pulling down like that. To get it off, you have to pull it over your head. So these headbands are a really great way to do that too. And you can use these headbands as well. Okay, so I have a ton of other kitchen stuff for you. And I didn't want to overdo because you guys know I can. This is one of those cute little oven mitts. This guy here is the perfect size for most of us that are doing the cooking. But every now and then you'll have a guy that is doing the cooking. So I had a request to make a bigger one. You can see how that's way too big for me. But this template, this has three pieces to it. If we look, one, two, three, I have one. There's a place on fold, that's two. And then there's a mark and a mark here, and that's three. So this template is gonna let you do all of that. And if you noticed, I've marked here, you can use a metallic marker so you can mark those lines so you can see. The no slip material makes all of our cutting accurate, consistent, even. And then the fun is in choosing the fabrics and choosing, if you're gonna make a set of things, make the microwave bowl cozies. This is the flat edges that I have as the straight edge. And then I've got the curved one somewhere. You saw it earlier. So you can make both. If you're going to do uh, church bazaars or you're going to sell these, then make those and make the plate cozies and sell them as a set. So have fun with all of this stuff. Stitch in the kitchen. Have fun. This is such a practical but fun kind of an idea. Everybody can use this. Even somebody that doesn't enjoy cooking, they still need this stuff. Stay tuned to my Facebook page tomorrow. I am going to post a giveaway, so look for that. And Zeke's pulled it up on the screen. My YouTube Linda videos, I've got 190 videos plus on YouTube for you. And then my, um, my coupon code that I'm using for this is WWL. Doesn't matter if it's capital letters or lowercase, you get a 20% off, and that's good through Friday night. So, Raylene, I think I'm done. Terrific. You know, that is my favorite kind of pot holder, and I only so have good. one of them. I only oh. have one, so I'm going to need to order the template because if I ever have five free minutes, that's what I'm going to yeah. make because I and love how those quick so it is. much. Everything it's just so I much do easier. Is fast. Yep, yes, absolutely. that's why I love Wonderful. you, Linda. Well, that's why I love you. <laughs> well, right. if you'll just stick around for just a minute, um, Ron's going to work on getting everybody back in. And while he's doing that, I just want to remind everybody, again, next, next week, week, we are going, going to be live, live from, Boise from Boise doing our uh, special, special three-day three event. event. And for those of you that can't make it to Boise, we've got Oklahoma coming up in June. So we're coming everybody's way before the end of the year. All right, so we're going to bring everybody back in real quick. So now's the time. If you have questions for any of our vendors, just type those in and we'll try to get to all of them. But uh, I actually jotted one down from earlier for Jan. Jan, Rondi is asking if you have a uh, American flag. I'm working on one. It's actually Betsy Ross. So and it's a closed top thimble. It has a picture of her sitting and stitching on it, and then the flag goes all the way around the thimble. Uh, watch for it probably be a month until I get the first one cast. That's awesome. Okay, let me see if we've got any other questions. You guys were so thorough today. <laughs> I'm thinking we probably aren't going to have a lot, but uh, we're scrolling down. Uh, let's see. I, okay, this is a first. <laughs> well, you no guys questions. are all so no, super thorough, 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 thorough today, today, too. Everybody did a great job. Yeah. So, yeah. So, guys, I'm sorry we had to stick around, but it looks like uh, we don't have any questions today. So, we do appreciate all three of you for your wonderful demonstrations that you did for us today. Whoops. Uh, oh, oh cool. nice never mind. Seeing you guys. I miss you guys. Yeah. I well, miss we miss you guys all too. of you. Yeah. You guys did okay, great. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. And before we sign off, I just want to remind you to check back on the Facebook page right here at Quilt Craft Sewing Festival later today to see who won all the prizes. And I promise I'll try to have that up by about 6 o'clock uh, Pacific time today. And I think that's it. We just always like to tell you guys that we appreciate you all so much. Your support during this last over a year has meant everything to all of us, and we will never be able to thank you enough. But we are so excited that we're going to start seeing a lot of you in person. And for those of you 
who are in states states that we don't go to, to. don't worry, worry. we're not going to abandon you. you. Beth and I have a lot of fun, exciting things planned for Wild Wednesday Live as we go forward. So we hope to see a lot of you at Boise. The rest of you, we hope to see you online. And everybody go out and have a creative rest of your week. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.